So, 180 degrees. How are they made? Same way they've been made for the last, all the time I've been in the industry. Um, first off, everybody makes an aluminum enclosure today. Don't know anybody that isn't making aluminum. High temperature insulation. The, this one has both kinds in it that are acceptable inside a collector. You can't put styrofoam or something like that inside a collector. It'll melt. So this is called isocyanurate. This is fiberglass, just normal kind of fiberglass everybody has in their house. It's got a flat plate, and that plate is almost always either aluminum or copper. The waterways of all the collectors made today are copper. Why copper? 50 years, 100 years. I've seen many of these 30 years plus old that are still working fine. So I would give a flat plate collector like this a 50 year lifespan if it's well made collector. And this one happens to be a well made collector. So it's got a flat plate. The plate is bonded. When I pass this around to you, you can look at it and you can see how well it is bonded, the tube to the plate. It's important. You just take a tube and lay it on a plate, it's not going to work worth a hoot. It's got to be bonded well to it, soldered, welded, uh, ultrasonically uh, uh, soldered. <coughs> All kinds of ways different manufacturers make. Some of them actually do it with a thermally uh, conductive adhesive to bond the tube to the plate. It has to be bonded though. And then there's glass. This has plastic on it because if I carry around glass it always gets broken. So plastic, but the glass that we use, this would be glass, in all the collectors made, is tempered to start with, which is the same as safety glass. In all probability, this is tempered glass right here because it's right next to a door. Patio doors are all tempered glass. Shower doors are all tempered glass. Tempered glass withstands a whole lot more abuse than regular anneal glass. Should it be tempered? Sitting up on the roof, hail. So if a hail is going to dent your car, it's liable to break the collector. If it's small enough that it's not going to dent your car and do some other damage like that, it probably won't. Car, wind sh or car windshields are tempered and they're also laminated. The side windows on cars are all just tempered, same as on solar collectors. Breaks into a thousand little pieces. That's why they call it safety glass. It's not going to, it'll cut you, but it'll just give you a little cut. It's not going to cut your arm off or anything if it breaks. And these are big pieces of glass, remember? Four foot by eight foot. So you don't want a big old shard of glass. <coughs> so tempered glass, we also use in the solar industry, this is both the, the thermal industry and the photovoltaic industry, we use what's called low iron glass. You take this window glass over here, it actually has a transmittance through it. Now you, you can't see this with your eye, but you can see it with the spectrum of the heat spectrum that this will pick up low iron glass, oh, about 7% more transmittance through the glass than regular window glass, just from pulling the iron out of it. You look at a piece of glass on edge, what's the color of a piece of glass when you look at it on edge? Green. Guess what low iron glass is? No color. It's white, basically. So if you ever wonder about it and you see a greenish tint in it, no, that's not no low iron glass. Well, iron glass will be white or have basically no tint to it. <coughs> What's that get us? Over 100 years ago, that gets us 7% more. We get 7% more light into the box, we get 7% more energy coming out of it. And the last thing that there is with a flat plate collector like this is the coating we put on the absorber plate. This is called the absorber plate, bonded to the riser tubes, which are hooked to the header tube. The coating that's put on the absorber plate, today in most cases it is called a selective surface. And that over black paint, this would just be black paint. So you could take and build a collector, and build a fine one too actually, 
and you could get a high heat paint. You want something like barbecue uh, paint or uh, engine, engine paint is another good high heat paint, 500 degree paints. Those are stove paint, any of those. <coughs> you paint the absorber. All right, that's going to last probably 20, 30, maybe even 40 years if you do a good job painting. But what black paint does is it absorbs 95% of the energy coming into it, and it emits 95% of the energy. Now, that doesn't mean it's losing it all. It's just the nature of black body radiation. So it's sitting here and emitting and losing some unneeded, it has some unneeded loss. With a selective surface, they put it like, oh, the first selective surface was called black chrome. And that collector happens to have a black chrome selective surface. But they would take and deposit a micron thick amount of chrome. Very, very clean room kind of technology. Micron stick, then coat it with black. Now, what did that do? That little bit of chrome, that micron stick, what it did is it stopped the emittance. It didn't emit 95% anymore. It would only emit 10, 15%. What does that do? Especially in colder climates, it makes the collector operate maybe 5% better. In some conditions, it might even be 10% better. Very odd conditions. So you do get something out of that. You get a higher temperature, especially in colder, cloudier weather with a, a uh, selective surface. Where I'm from, we don't like selective surfaces. Why do you think? It's, clear, it's, it's, it's actually a climate that's close to Knoxville. We, we have actually similar climates. But why wouldn't I want a selective surface in Albuquerque? It gets too hot. We can have overheating problems too. And so it gets too hot and we tend to like black paint. And this is just stuff we've learned over the years. If you have too intense a sun, the one thing we've got is about 50% more sunlight than Knoxville has. We've got a very similar number of degree days. So we have a kind of a same harshness of winter. But we have a lot more sunlight. It gets too hot. So in the desert, no, we don't like selective surfaces. Here, selective surfaces, well worth the money. Well worth the money. Because it's better in diffuse radiation. And it's better the colder that it is. That's the makeup of a good flat plate collector. Pretty much they're all made like that. 